Freedom. It's the number one drive and desire of every human being. We all desire to be free. And that means something different to each one of us. But at the baseline, at the root of it all, what that freedom means is that we can actually bring out from within us the gifts, the talents, the imaginings, the inspirations, and to turn those into tangible experiences that cause our hearts to sing, that make us laugh and smile and believe that we are contributing to the greatness of this life and this world. And so here's what you need to know that causes you to not allow yourself to go there. And also what you need to know is how easily you're being manipulated to not even think that you can go there. So in the last video, I talked about Hebb's Law in terms of when you make your neurology fire through thought, through emotion, when you connect them to some kind of a physical event, you then cause an association between the trigger point and a particular outcome. Kind of like Pavlov's dog. If you know the story about Pavlov's dog, you know he started out, he was doing an experiment, Pavlov was doing an experiment with his dog, and basically what he did is he fed the dog a steak and, wa and noticed that the dog would salivate. So he said, well, I wonder if I was to apply a auditory trigger, in this case it was a bell, to the moment that I give this dog this steak, if I do it, I wonder if at some point I don't even have to give the dog a steak and they'll just automatically salivate. And it worked. So through repetition, what he did was every time he fed the dog a steak, he would ring the bell. And eventually he didn't even have to feed the dog the steak. All he had to do was ring the bell and the dog was salivate. And so that's what I mean by neurons that fire together, wire together. So let's take something, for example, like being told that repeatedly that you are going to die and you are gonna die from a pandemic and that pandemic is called coronavirus or COVID-19 and that there's nothing you can do about it. You're all susceptible, that you can't talk to people, you can't go outside, you gotta stay in your house, and this could go on indefinitely, that you are basically not safe and you cannot live your life as you normally do. So <laughs> with that whole program comes all sorts of significant emotional trauma because the number one fear that every human being has is to die. So on one side of the coin, you know, we're talking about split energy in the last video. So on one side of the coin, we have this complete desire for freedom and joy and self-expression and you know just basically to be ourselves without repercussion without judgment and then on the other side of the coin we have this massive fear of death and so because we have two basically different we basically have two different kinds of neurons that fire in our brain there's the d1 and the d2 so can't remember which is which, but suffice it to say that let's say it's the D1 is a positive um, anticipation, and let's say the D2 is negative. Well, we have way more D2 neurons in our brain than we do D1s. So if the D2 neuron package or population 
is obviously it's more rampant, it's a broader audience. And so it's getting triggered literally like an assault, an assault on your nervous system. Everything you read, everything you hear, everything you see, your neighbors, well, you don't see your neighbors because the streets are bare. Your, your neighborhood is empty. The, the freeways are completely blank. There's nothing on them. This is just a constant barrage of negative triggers being hammered and pounded and imprinted into your nervous system to the point where your entire flight or fight response mechanism completely shuts down and you can't move. You're basically rendered immobile. And it's not just your physical body that's been immobilized, it's your thinking. Most importantly, your thinking has been immobilized. You stop dreaming, you stop having faith, you stop trusting that everything is always working out for you. You stop having this sense of appreciation about your life because you're basically being bombarded with trillions and trillions and trillions of triggers, emotional triggers around fear to the point where you can't even think straight. And now guess what? Now you turn on your neighbor because now they're the enemy. What if you catch it from them? You see, it just keeps going and going and going to the point where, and then you actually know someone who's ill from it, or you actually hear of someone who's died from it, and now you're completely frothing at the mouth with complete terror, and you cannot move. You are completely frozen. And guess what? They won. Because now you are so easy to control. You are like a puppet on a string. And here's how it works. Let me explain it to you. So all beliefs are just a thought that you think over and over and over. And, and thought is a electrical current that runs through your body. How does the thought turn into reality? It happens with the intensity of your feelings. So the more you feel something, the more you draw that thing to you. And we're talking about law of attraction here. And I will get into that more deeply as I get into more videos. But first I just wanna to explain to you how this pattern or how patterns are actually created in your programming. They happen through repetition. Now, there's a theory that says that it's somewhere between three, seven, or 21 repetitions that we actually produce a new pattern or a new habit. Some people say it's 21 days, but that's actually erroneous. It's three, seven, or 21 repetitions. The cool thing is you can program yourself into accepting, believing, being, creating habits, patterns, behaviors on anything you want, anything. That's how people quit smoking. That's how people lose weight. That's how people get ill. That's how people get healthy. That's how people choose poverty. That's how people choose wealth and prosperity. It's all a program. You see, there's no one outside of you looking down at you, telling you what you can be, do, or have, including disease, including freedom. 
So somewhere between three, seven, and 21 repetitions, and we have now effectively installed a new habit. And that habit, let's say for sake of this, uh, this video, let's say that habit is a, a feeling and that feeling is connected to a thought pattern. So in this case, the feeling is fear of death, terror, you've been traumatized, <laughs> your entire senses, your entire nervous system has had a 24 seven assault on it in, on a global scale, which is beyond anything that anyone could possibly imagine until you actually live it. And now you feel vulnerable. You are so vulnerable that you will turn on anyone that threatens you further. And this is what has caused the entire world, the entire world to be on its knees. And then we have all kinds of media pounding in your brains about all of these deaths and it's been absolutely insane. So where did this all come from in terms of strategically being able to control billions of people through the repetition of media and certain organizations making dire statements of doomsday <laughs> and having everyone completely fall to their knees and be willing to accept. It's powerful. Imagine if you had in your business even like a fragment of that kind of branding and marketing capacity to influence the masses. Well, here's how it all began, more or less. So Sigmund Freud, the most grandfather, I suppose, of how the unconscious mind and how the conscious mind and the superconscious mind, how basically the mind of the human being actually functions. And he was able to turn it into a, a really well-developed practice and he became famous, infamous, really, in terms of what he postulated in terms of human potential and how it gets uh, sabotaged or how we sabotage ourselves and what actually we can do to, to move beyond whatever we see as being our capacity for greatness and being able to expand that capacity for greatness and try new things and, and do better than our programming and conditioning or do better than our environment or what our family taught us and, and, and our socioeconomic, whatever. So what's interesting is that along comes Sigmund Freud's nephew and his name is Edward Bernay. Now Edward Bernay is actually probably more famous, maybe you didn't even hear about this guy, but he's actually more famous than his uncle. And he is known as the godfather of public relations. So essentially, Edward Bernay studied his brother, his uncle's work, and then took all of this knowledge and awareness of how malleable, and how susceptible the human mind is to programming and conditioning. And he basically packaged it up and he sold it. He sold it to governments. He sold it to large corporations, General Electric, Procter and Gamble. He sold it to the CIA and they were able to effectively in 1954 overthrow the Guatemalan government. He sold his soul, in my opinion, but they'll save that for another day. And essentially what he did is he launched what is known today as public relations, as branding. And essentially what it is, is 
when you use the senses of the human being and you get a certain message across to that to that human being or groups of human beings or segments of society or in this case of covid the entire planet and you you marry with that you find the right achilles heel if you will and maybe what you do in advance of that is you actually create some markers and create some layers of fear trauma fear trauma loss fear trauma loss it ends up building up over time to the point where any significant emotional event that comes along pops that trigger and now you're like on your knees begging for mercy in complete fear because you don't want to die and that's essentially what we have been through so with that knowledge this has had a ongoing assault on our nervous system and remember it only takes three seven and up to 21 repetitions to layer in a pattern or a habit and when you marry that with a significant emotional event like the fear of death or the fear of the death of someone you love then you become like putty to any other messaging that comes along and this is what Edward Brene discovered by studying his uncle's work and so essentially every public relations campaign that has ever run over the course of time has come from this knowledge and this understanding so he was really famous for selling to to women back in the early time when you know women just basically didn't have any rights like you couldn't go to a bar without your husband or you couldn't even go to the bar you couldn't smoke you couldn't vote and he he came up with this notion of we create these long slim slender cigarettes so I guess where he sold this idea to and then we call this like the tower of freedom and I'm paraphrasing and we sell it to the female gender in our marketing and then what ended up happening is you know women started smoking because it was a way of setting themselves free nobody ever talked about the health implications but it sure sold a hell of a lot of cigarettes and so there's this see what I'm sharing with you there, there has to be like a connection like an anchoring a an association between the emotion or the desired outcome in this case it was freedom or the emotion of feeling free right connecting that to the consumption of the cigarettes and now you've got massive cigarette sales by women buying them up and this is essentially how everyone is controlled on this planet so companies will sell you sex you drink this beer and you'll have these like hot women with their boobs hanging out all over you or you you drink this um, alcohol and you'll have you know a room full of hot sexy men to shoot pool with you know it's selling something else besides the actual product but what it's doing is it's creating an association which creates an anchor in the nervous system remember Hebb's law neurons that fire together wire together and so now you connect into actually living that reality you'll spend your money on it you will sacrifice your friendships for it you will even give up your self-esteem and your self-worth and your health just to be a part of this perceived lifestyle of happiness and sex and sexiness and yet then at the end of the day you know we all know that alcoholics end up destroying themselves and destroying them their health and they never they don't they're not sexy 
I mean, what else can I say? So, you know, essentially that's what we're living this awakening right now. And, and so what's happening is it's gone on for weeks and months now and people are pissed off because we're social animals and we need to be around each other. So even if it means being around each other when we're angry. And so now you've got this whole combustion of what's taking place. And I won't go into the details on that because I'll save that for another video. But I wanted to share with you how we actually get programmed to believe and accept that we are powerless, that we are weak, that we are victims, that we have to do as we're told. You know, at the end of the day, if billions of people would have refused to stay in lockdown for months and would have continued to live their lives, there really wouldn't have been anything that the governments could have done about it. But that's another conversation for another time. The point is, is that I want you to understand that every time you put on social media, every time you watch an advert on television, every time you're online and an advert pops up, you are being programmed and conditioned to think you're not worthy, to think you're not good enough, to think that you have your body's wrong, your finances are wrong, your relationships are wrong, your, your profession is wrong, your kids are wrong, that you're wrong. And the more you're programmed to view yourself that way, the weaker and weaker and weaker you become to the point where you're looking for someone outside of you to save you. And there isn't anything outside of you to save you because you have the power to completely align yourself, put yourself into balance, and to create the experiences that make your heart sing and smile. Thank you for liking. I really appreciate you being here. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. It tells YouTube that you like my stuff and I will keep putting up lots of tools here for you and we'll unpack this great awakening so that you can live the life that you've always believed and dreamed you could live and that's one of freedom. Take care my friends. Bye.